It started as a simple cross-country road trip, a chance for five friends, Jake, Emily, Sarah, Derek, and MIA, to escape their mundane routines and explore the vast landscapes of the American wilderness. They loaded up Jake's old, trusty station wagon, complete with camping gear, snacks, a few cases of beer, and an outdated GPS they affectionately named Gertrude. The first few days were filled with laughter, scenic pit stops, and late night campfires. They shared stories of their lives, their dreams, and occasionally, spooky tales they barely believed themselves. It was on the fourth night, under a blanket of stars somewhere in the Nevada desert, that things began to take a sinister turn. As they sat around the fire, Derek pulled out an old map he'd found in a gas station. Check this out, he said, spreading it on the ground. The map was yellowed with age, the edges frayed, marking a scenic route through an area none of them had heard of. It's supposed to be beautiful, isolated. Perfect for our next adventure. Intrigued and eager for something off the beaten path, they unanimously agreed to detour. The next morning, they followed the map's directions, turning onto a narrow, unpaved road that snaked into the dense forest. The deeper they drove, the more the canopy of trees blotted out the sky, casting long shadows across the road. Are you sure this is the right way? Emily's voice quivered slightly as she glanced nervously out the window at the encroaching darkness. Gertrude, their GPS, had long since lost signal, her screen displaying nothing but static. It's an adventure, right? Jake tried to sound confident, though he gripped the steering wheel a little tighter. As they rounded a sharp bend, the engine sputtered and died. Jake tried the ignition several times, but the car wouldn't start. They were stranded with no cell service in an unknown part of the forest. We'll have to stay here tonight, Jake announced reluctantly, noticing the sun dipping below the horizon. First thing in the morning, I'll hike out and find some help. They set up camp near the car, uneasy but trying to make the best of the situation. As night fell, a thick fog rolled in, enveloping them in a cold, damp blanket. The air grew unnaturally still, the usual sounds of wildlife eerily absent. Around the campfire, their conversation dwindled, each lost in their own anxious thoughts. That's when they heard it, a soft, whispering voice, barely audible over the crackling of the fire. It seemed to come from the woods, a mournful, pleading call. Help me, please, chilled to the bone, they huddled closer together, straining their ears. The voice came again, louder this time, more desperate. Without a word, Derek grabbed a flashlight and headed towards the source of the voice. Derek, wait. Sarah called after him, but he was already swallowed by the mist. Moments later, they heard him scream, a sound so full of terror it froze them in place. Panicked, Jake and MIA grabbed their own lights and rushed into the forest, leaving Emily and Sarah by the fire, clutching each other in fear. The mist grew thicker as Jake and MIA searched for Derek, their lights barely cutting through the dense white fog. Every shadow seemed to shift, every tree appeared to whisper. After what seemed like hours, they found Derek, or what was left of him, sprawled near an old, gnarled tree. His eyes were wide open, filled with an unspeakable horror. MIA stifled a scream, her hand flying to her mouth. Jake knelt beside Derek, checking for any signs of life, but it was too late. His friend was gone, and there was no visible wound, no sign of what had caused his death. Horrified, they ran back to the campsite to find Emily and Sarah gone, their chairs knocked over, a single flashlight lying on the ground, it's been pointing into the dark forest. Emily! Sarah! Jake's voice broke as he called into the mist. There was no response, only the sound of their own heavy breathing and the distant, mocking call of the wind through the trees. As they stood there, lost and terrified, the whispering voice returned, now a chorus of whispers, surrounding them, closing in. Join us, stay forever, Jake and MIA clung to each other, their hearts pounding as they backed away from the unseen voices. They stumbled through the dark, trying to find a way out, 
but the forest seemed to twist and turn against them, leading them deeper into its shadowy depths. And then, just when all hope seemed lost, they saw a light ahead, a faint, flickering glow that seemed to beckon them forward. Exhausted and driven by a desperate hope, Jake and M.I.A. moved toward it, their feet dragging over the rough, tangled roots of the forest floor. The light originated from a dilapidated cabin, its windows cracked and fogged, the wood siding weathered and rotting. The door was slightly ajar, creaking ominously with each gust of wind that managed to pierce the dense fog. Despite the cabin's foreboding appearance, the possibility of refuge drove them to push open the door and step inside. The interior was musty, the air thick with the scent of mold and decay. An old oil lamp flickered on a rickety table, casting eerie shadows across the walls, which were lined with old, faded photographs of people whose eyes seemed to follow them as they moved. A fireplace long cold, filled with ashes and the remnants of charred wood, sat at one end of the single room. Hello. Jake's voice echoed slightly, his tone a mixture of hope and fear. There was no reply, only the sound of their own breathing and the distant, relentless whispers of the forest. Mia's eyes scanned the room, landing on a dusty bookshelf crammed with old books and more photographs. She approached it slowly, her fingers trembling as she touched the spine of a thick, leather-bound book. As she pulled it out, a folded piece of paper fell from between the pages, fluttering to the floor. She stooped to pick it up, unfolding it carefully. It was a map of the forest, similar to the one Derek had found, but older and more detailed. There were marks on it that seemed to indicate trails or paths, and one was circled in red ink with the word Sanctuary scrawled beside it. We need to find this place, M.I.A. said, showing Jake the map. It might be our way out. They decided to rest in the cabin for a short while, gathering their strength. As they sat in silence, the wind outside grew stronger, the whispers louder and more insistent. It was as if the forest itself was alive, aware of their presence and desiring to keep them within its grasp. After a brief, uneasy rest, they gathered a few supplies from the cabin, two flashlights, a rusty hunting knife, and a bottle of water that had been left on the table, and prepared to leave. But as they approached the door, it slammed shut with such force that the cabin shook. Jake tried to open it, pushing and pulling, but it wouldn't budge. It was as if some unseen force held it firmly closed. M.I.A. tried to help, her panic rising, but it was useless. They were trapped. As they backed away from the door, the lamp on the table flickered wildly before going out, plunging the cabin into darkness. They turned on their flashlights, the beams cutting through the blackness, revealing that the photographs on the walls had changed. Now each depicted scenes of horror, images of people screaming, running, or worse, bodies twisted in unnatural poses, their faces etched with terror. M.I.A. gasped, her light trembling in her hand. What is this place? She whispered, her voice barely audible. Jake didn't answer. He was focused on the fireplace, where he noticed that the ashes seemed to be stirring, as if disturbed by an unseen hand. Slowly, a figure began to form from the ashes and dust, coalescing into a solid shape. It was a woman, her features vague and shifting, her eyes hollow pits of despair. Help us, Jake said, stepping forward, his flashlight aimed at the spectral figure. Please, we just want to leave. The figure stared at them, and then, in a voice that was a mere breath, she spoke. No one leaves, she said. The forest keeps us all. The temperature in the room dropped, their breath visible in the icy air. The whispers outside grew to a crescendo, a symphony of voices that seemed to seep through the cracks of the cabin, filling the space with a chilling lament. Jake and M.I.A. huddled together, realizing the gravity of their situation. They were not merely lost in the forest, they were ensnared in something far older and more sinister. The cabin, the voices, the ghostly figure, all were part of the forest's haunting, a never-ending cycle of horror that they had unwittingly stepped into. Outside, the wind howled like the cries of the damned, the whispers louder now, more demanding. 
Stay, they hissed. Join us. As the spectral woman advanced, her form becoming more defined, more terrifying, Jake and M.I.A. braced themselves, knowing that their ordeal was far from over, and the night was yet to reach its darkest hour. In the cramped darkness of the cabin, the spectral figure moved closer, its form shimmering with a ghostly luminescence. Each step seemed to suck the warmth from the air, deepening the bone-chilling cold that enveloped Jake and M.I.A. The whispers of the forest crescendoed into an overwhelming chorus, pressing against the thin walls of the cabin as if trying to breach its last defenses. M.I.A. clutched the flashlight tighter, her other hand gripping Jake's. Their beams of light, thin and shaky, barely cut through the thickening bloom that filled the cabin. They backed away slowly as the figure approached, its face becoming clearer, eyes hollow, mouth agape in a silent scream. What do you want from us? Jake's voice cracked as he spoke, his flashlight been trembling over the spectral figure. The ghost paused, tilting its head as if puzzled by his words. Then, in a voice like the wind rustling through dead leaves, it whispered, to share our fate. To never leave. As it spoke, the air in the cabin grew oppressively tight, as if the atmosphere itself was being drawn into the figure. The edges of the room blurred into shadows that crept closer, encircling Jake and M.I.A., drawing tighter like a noose. Look for the heart, M.I.A. suddenly remembered, her voice a whisper barely audible over the wailing winds outside. The map in the book, it mentioned the heart of the forest. Maybe that's the key. The ghost halted, its form flickering as if disturbed by her words. It stared at M.I.A., a flicker of consciousness parsing over its spectral face. Then, without warning, it dissipated into a cloud of ash and smoke, sinking back into the cold fireplace from whence it came. Let's get out of here, Jake said urgently, tugging at Mia's arm. They rushed to the door, which inexplicably swung open with a creaking moan, no longer barred by unseen forces. They didn't hesitate, stepping out into the foggy night, the cold air biting at their skin. The forest around them was alive with movement. Shadows flitted between the trees, and the whispers were now loud, insistent. Stay, they called. Stay with us. Ignoring the voices, they hurried along the path, guided by the vague memory of the map M.I.A. had seen. The forest seemed endless, each tree like the next, a repeating pattern of twisted branches and rustling leaves. As they moved deeper into the forest, strange phenomena began to occur. Trees seemed to bend towards them, branches reaching out like fingers in the dim light of their flashlights. Faces appeared and disappeared in the bark, as watching them, mouths whispering silent words. After what felt like hours, they found themselves in a clearing. In its center stood an ancient tree, massive and gnarled, its trunk wide and imposing. It pulsed with a faint light, a heartbeat of sorts, illuminating the clearing with a soft glow. The heart of the forest. This is it, M.I.A. said, her voice filled with a mix of awe and fear. This is what the map was leading us to. They approached the tree cautiously. Its surface was smooth, almost reflective, unlike any tree they had ever seen. Carved into its trunk was a symbol, an eye surrounded by spirals, ancient and enigmatic. As they touched the tree, the ground beneath them trembled. The whispers of the forest crescendoed into a deafening roar, and the tree's glow brightened, casting long, dark shadows across the clearing. The air around them vibrated with power, the energy emanating from the tree palpable, almost electric. Suddenly, the voices stopped, replaced by a deep, resonant silence that filled the clearing. They could feel the eyes of the forest upon them, watching, waiting. What now? Jake whispered, his hand still on the smooth bark of the tree. We need to find out how to use this, M.I.A. replied, her eyes scanning the carvings, searching for a clue, a sign of what to do next. As they pondered their next move, the silence was broken by a soft, melodic voice, unlike the tormented whispers they had heard before. You have found the heart, it said, resonating around them, sourceless and omnipresent. But the path you seek requires more than discovery. 
It demands a choice. Jake and MIA looked at each other, uncertainty and fear mingling in their expressions. They knew they were standing on the threshold of something profound and terrifying. The night was far from over, and the heart of the forest had secrets yet to unveil. As Jake and MIA ventured deeper into the ancient woods, the path narrowed, the moon casting ghostly shadows that slithered across their path like silent spectres. The trees leaned in, close and oppressive, their branches scratching at the air like the fingers of the long dead, making a sound that was almost like whispering. The forest seemed alive, watching them with unseen eyes, its breath a cold wind that made their candles flicker wildly. With each step, the forest grew darker and the air colder. The path underfoot was uneven, roots and rocks hidden in the shadows that sought to trip them. Every snap of a twig, every rustle of leaves tightened the knot of fear in their stomachs. They clung to each other, their only comfort the warmth of human touch in the chilling embrace of the forest. As they rounded a particularly dense thicket, they stumbled upon a small clearing that hadn't been marked on any map. In the center stood an ancient stone well, its edges worn and covered in moss. The stones around the well were carved with strange runes that seemed to glow faintly in the moonlight, pulsating with a rhythm that mimicked a heartbeat. The air around the well was colder, a palpable presence that seemed to emanate from the depths below. MIA approached the well cautiously, peering into its dark depths. A faint, eerie light seemed to glow from within, casting an unnatural luminance that did not reflect the moon's soft glow. Do you hear that, she whispered, her voice trembling. Jake listened, and it took him a moment to distinguish the sound, a soft, melodic humming, like a lullaby, rising from the well. It was both beautiful and terrifying, a siren song that beckoned them closer with its haunting melody. This must be part of the final challenge, Jake said, his voice barely above a whisper, his eyes never leaving the glowing depths. MIA nodded, pulling the diary from her back. Flipping through the pages by the dim light of her candle, she found a passage that made her pause. It says here that the well of dreams shows you what you fear and what you desire, but to drink from its waters is to embrace the darkness within and without. As they contemplated the cryptic warning, the humming grew louder, more insistent. Shadows began to form in the air around the well, coalescing into the shapes of human figures. These figures were vague and misty, their features blurred, but their eyes were clear, deep, endless pits of sorrow and longing. These must be the spirits of those who came before us, M.I.A. breathed, her eyes wide with fear. The figures began to circle the well, their movements graceful yet somber, as if performing a ritual dance that had been enacted countless times over centuries. As they moved, they reached out towards Jake and M.I.A., their fingers almost touching them before dissolving into the air. Are we supposed to join them? Jake asked, his hand reaching for Mears. Before she could respond, one of the figures broke from the circle and approached them. It stopped a mere breath away, its eyes piercing into theirs. Then, in a voice that was both a whisper and a wail, it spoke, to move forward, you must leave behind what you hold most dear. Only then can you truly see. The figure pointed towards the well, and as they watched, the water within began to swirl, forming images. Jake saw glimpses of his family, his friends, his old life, the one he had left behind to embark on this journey. MIA saw different visions, her dreams of the future, possibilities that might never come to pass if she couldn't find a way out of this forest. Torn between the fear of losing themselves and the desire to complete their journey, they faced each other, the weight of their choices pressing down upon them. The spirits continued their dance, their humming now a mournful dirge that seemed to fill the forest. We have to decide, M.I.A. said, her voice steady despite the tears that glistened in her eyes. Do we take the risk, or do we turn back? Jake took her hand, squeezing it tightly. Together, he said, his decision clear. Whatever happens, we face it together. With a deep, collective breath, they turned to face the well, stepping forward into the circle of spirits, ready to confront whatever truths lay hidden in its waters. 
As they did, the spirits parted for them, their humming a soft, sad farewell. As Jake and M.I.A. reached the edge of the well, peering into its glowing depths, the forest held its breath, waiting for their choice to unfold, the path ahead shrouded in darkness and uncertainty. As Jake and M.I.A. stood at the edge of the well, the air around them thickened, pulsing with the unseen energy of the forest. The waters of the well continued to swirl, images flickering faster, showing not just past or potential futures but possible endings, terrifying, peaceful, abrupt. Each vision tugged at their hearts, a cacophony of what ifs and should-haves. With each passing moment, the humming grew into a symphony of whispers, each spirit voice layering over the last, urging them to look deeper, to understand the essence of the well's power. The choice that lay before them was now clear, to drink from the well was to accept the forest's dark embrace, to become part of its ancient, endless cycle, or to turn away and possibly wander lost forever, haunted by the memory of what might have been. Mia's voice broke the intense silence between them, a whisper lost in the wind, it's not just about seeing our fears or desires. It's about understanding them, confronting them. She turned to Jake, her eyes resolute. I don't want to be trapped by what I'm afraid to face. Jake nodded, understanding her meaning. He looked into the well once more, the visions now blurring into one another, creating a disorienting mosaic of light and shadow. He then looked at the gathered spirits, their forms blurry and shifting as if ready to dissipate at a moment's notice. We face them together, he reaffirmed, grasping Mia's hand tighter. They stepped back from the well, turning their backs to the seductive pull of its waters. As they did, the forest around them reacted, the ground shuddered, and the air snapped with a tension that felt almost like betrayal. The spirit's humming turned into a wail, mournful and despairing, as if mourning a loss. But from the depths of the well, a new sound emerged, a deep, echoing roar that vibrated through the ground and filled the air with a threatening promise of retribution. We need to leave, now. Jake shouted over the growing roar, pulling M.I.A. along as they started to run. The path they had followed into the clearing was barely visible now, obscured by a swirling fog that seemed to rise directly from the ground, thick and suffocating. They ran without looking back, the sounds of the forest cascading around them in a tumultuous wave of noise. Branches reached out, snagging their clothes, scratching their faces, as if the forest itself was trying to hold them back, to pull them into its depths. The moon, their only source of light, cast fleeting shadows on the path ahead, guiding them through the oppressive darkness. Their breaths came in ragged gasps, their hearts pounding in their ears, each step forward a defiance of the forest's will. After what felt like an eternity, the oppressive presence of the well and its spirits began to fade, the air gradually lightening, the path becoming clearer. They emerged from the forest's edge just as the first light of dawn began to crest the horizon, the early morning rays piercing through the retreating darkness. Exhausted but relieved, Jake and M.I.A. collapsed on the ground just beyond the forest's boundary, the grass beneath them a stark contrast to the gnarled roots of the woods. As they lay there, catching their breath, they watched the sunrise, its warmth a balm to their chilled, weary bodies. We made it, M.I.A. said, her voice a mix of disbelief and joy. We actually made it. Jake turned to her, a smile breaking across his face. We did. Together. As the sun rose higher, illuminating the world around them, they knew their journey was not just about escaping the forest or the spirits within. It was about understanding their fears, confronting them, and choosing a path together, a path that led them out of darkness and into the light. And though the forest remained, a dark silhouette against the morning sky, its power diminished with distance, they knew they would carry its lessons with them forever, tales of a haunted well, spirits of the past, and the heart of a forest that tested all who dared enter its depths. As Jake and M.I.A. watched the sunrise from their place at the forest's edge, the light seemed to wash away the remnants of the night's terror. They sat in silence, each lost in thought, reflecting on the ordeal they had endured. The forest behind them stood still and silent, as if respecting their hard-won victory, a dark monument to their trials. 
After a moment, Emma turned to Jake, her expression solemn. Do you think it's really over? She asked, the weight of their experiences etching lines of worry across her face. Jake looked back at the dense tree line, the shadows of the forest seeming less menacing in the light of day. It feels over, but maybe, maybe it's just a new beginning, he replied thoughtfully. A beginning where we're not running away from our fears but learning from them. They both knew that the forest and its mystical well would continue to exist, a place of power and mystery, perhaps calling to others as it had to them. But for Jake and MIA, the journey had forged a bond of understanding and courage, a shared strength that they knew would guide them through whatever lay ahead. As they stood to leave, Jake found himself looking back one last time at the well's location deep within the trees. He felt a twinge of something, regret, curiosity, maybe even a hint of fear. The well had offered them a glimpse into their deepest selves, and part of him wondered what might have happened if they had embraced its dark gift. But then M.I.A. took his hand, pulling him gently away from the forest, away from the what IFS and the shadows. Come on, she said softly, let's go home. Home. The word felt new, filled with promise. As they walked away from the forest, the sun climbed higher, its rays piercing through the leaves and branches, creating patterns of light and dark that danced across their path. The beauty of the moment, a contrast to the darkness they had faced, reminded them that there was always light after darkness, always a path forward. They didn't speak much as they walked, each processing the journey in their own way. But as the forest receded and the landscape opened up around them, they felt a release, a lightness that they hadn't felt in days. By the time they reached the car, parked on a forgotten dirt road that seemed too mundane for the vehicle that had carried them to such extraordinary events, they were laughing, the sound bright and clear in the morning air. The laughter was a release, a final letting go of the night's horrors. They drove away from the forest, the trees becoming a green blur beside them. The road ahead was clear, and the sky was a vast expanse of blue, a canvas of possibilities. In the rearview mirror, the forest was just a dark line on the horizon, its power diminished with distance but its presence forever imprinted in their memories. As they headed towards home, the sun warmed their faces, and the road unwound before them, an unspoken promise that no matter how dark the path, there was always a way back to the light. And though they left the forest and its shadows behind, they carried with them a new understanding, a respect for the mysteries of the world that would forever color their days with a touch of the mystical, a hint of the unknown. The forest had changed them, but as they drove on, they knew they had emerged not just survivors, but conquerors of their own fears, ready to face the world with new eyes, 